Do your RV faucets have flow restrictors? Ours did. I guess that our manufacturers, most likely all of them, think that it's a good marketing gimmick to show how frugal their RVs are regarding water usage. <laughs> Granted, when boondocking, monitoring that water usage is a big thing. But what about that guy? Uh, who is it? Oh yeah, Darwin. You know, survival of the fittest, the smartest. Yeah, just look around. Most of us can see that his laws of natural selection have kind of been put on hold for a while. I do like having choices. You know, just how much dressing to put on my salad, uh, barbecue sauce on my ribs, or potato salad to put on my plate. Having choices is part of the cornerstone of what makes us free. But our builders are kind of taking the Henry Ford sort of approach. When Ford first started building cars, he was asked why he didn't make them in colors other than black. His response was to the effect that people can have it in any color they want, as long as it's black. In time, he realized that a simple choice increased his sales markedly. But in the RV world, we tend to get into sustainability. Like more solar, generators, gas, diesel, propane, even solar portable ones, larger holding tanks. And of course, what we're talking about today is flow restrictors on faucets and shower heads, and even less powerful water pumps. Now don't get me wrong, I do like the oxygenic shower heads. They just seem to provide a more potent stream while not uh, sacrificing flow or GPM. But again, that's our choice. Our factory faucets have restrictors and over time have been outputting a more impotent stream. Our rig is luxurious and unfortunately for us, the OEM faucets and heads have really been inadequate. That's such a shame because it's like a small apartment on wheels. It is so great to park in a place where we've never been to, go to sleep in our home, and wake up to open the blinds to all sorts of amazing vistas. The only thing that hasn't felt like home are the faucets and heads with those cheesy flows. What's really bad is we know those fixtures are low bid, and ours with the brush nickel look started rusting within six months of ownership. That's a lot of time wasted trying to keep them clean while their performance flow steadily decreased. Shelly had finally had her fill and ordered a couple of new ones off of Amazon. Two days later, I've got another project. This isn't hard, at least in our Grand Design 390RK. It's actually somewhat simple. Just empty out the under sink cabinets and remove the three center drawers from under the sink counter shut off the rig's water, and drain the lines at the wet bay. With the drawers out, it's easy to access the faucet's braided lines and their attachments to the RV plumbing. Now, the old faucets come out easy, but of course, I need to go to Big Orange to get some fittings that I think will adapt the new to the old. Which I did. Back to the RV, and not so fast. What I picked looked like it had worked, but was ever so slightly smaller than the new ones. Note, the old faucet end was a male 3 8 inch fitting and the new is female. So back to Orange and found a helpful and knowledgeable gentleman who showed me my error politely. The new fitting required a compression style male end with a standard half inch male to pec swivel fitting. I'll show you here. Back to the RV again, Teflon taped the male swivel end and nothing to the compression side. Red and blue stripes on the braided stainless steel lines indicated which PEX tubing, red or blue, I needed to connect them to. The new faucets fit smoothly into the old countertop holes, and after cleaning the counters off, the old was a cinch to remove and new a piece of cake to slip in. Wow. 
I snugged the fittings with a couple of speed wrenches, then turned the water back on. And guess what? No leaks! I left everything open for 24 hours just to be sure and, when satisfied, buttoned it all back up. Turn the faucets on and <laughs> wow! It's kind of like opening a hydrant after suffering with the old for so long. But what about all that GPM? That's gallons per minute. I liken it to this. It's kind of like TV or radio. They make a knob for that. If you don't like what you're seeing or hearing, then just turn the knob. It normally controls view and volume. Too much water? Turn it down or off. We probably boondock one-tenth of one percent of the time that we camp. Shelly likes glamping to camping anytime and full hookups are awesome. So now we can use the services to their fullest potential. For the times that we do harvest host, mooch docking, lot surf, or boondocking, we use that volume control judiciously and that way we have the best of both worlds. The new faucets look great. They should. Shelly has a couple of degrees in interior design and really uses them well. This has turned out to be a fairly inexpensive way to spruce up the old homestead. But I can almost hear the comments now. What about all those extra fitties that you bought? One great thing about Big Orange and Big Blue is that they cater well to us shade tree handymen, uh, guys, uh, people. If you have stuff left over, just bring it back in its original packaging with your receipt and they'll put it back on your card. Oh yeah, did you folks notice anything different about this video? This is our kickoff, OLT's Season 6. All new graphics, intros, and brand spanking new season of us on the road full time. Let us know what you think. We're working hard at bringing you content that we think you'll really enjoy. We really do hope that we'll cross each other's paths someday in our travels. Until then, please, travel safe.